Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian McCollum and I'm here today at the Rock Island Auction Company taking a look at one of the conversion kits that they are going to be selling in their upcoming May of 2019 Premier Firearms Auction. Specifically, this is a 22 rimfire conversion kit for the Luger pistol. And this is a kit or a design that was actually adopted by the German military. Now, it was originally patented by a German fellow by the name of Richard Kulich, 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 something like that. Um, my German is awful. Uh, in 1927, he patented this, and there was some sort of transaction between him and the Irma company, because while he patented it, Irma actually produced it. What's most likely is Irma probably bought the patent from him. Uh, Irma had actually uh, designed and manufactured and gotten a contract for a conversion kit for the Gewehr 98, which they had sold to the German military and security services. And so they were kind of the natural company to market something like this. Up until this point, uh, the German police and military did have a small caliber training conversion for the Luger, but it was a single shot four millimeter kit. So in 1931, the German military tested out this system. They decided they liked it and they adopted it in 1932. And there were a couple of serious advantages. This is a semi-automatic conversion, meaning, or it's a magazine fed conversion, meaning you can fire multiple shots just like you would with a regular pistol. And that's a big advantage for practice and training over a single shot kit. On the other hand, that four millimeter single shot kit uh, conversion was very quiet and very, very underpowered to the point that it could actually be used indoors. This 22 rimfire kit was more powerful um, and required an actual proper shooting range to use. So it was actually a little more, a little more complicated, a little more difficult for troops to train with because they need a little bit better facility to do it. But once they were able to, the training was better. So the German military, uh, the military and the police both, they didn't buy very many of these. Production would actually run until I believe 1940. Um, but the, the military bought uh, for, like, for units up to the first 30 pistols, they would get one. And after that, they would get one for every 15 pistols in inventory. Police were typically more like one in 50 um, pistols, got a conversion kit. And the kits are a little bit finicky. What you would typically do in a unit like that is just swap the kit between pistols until you found one where it was pretty well zeroed, although this does have an adjustable sight to it. Uh, pretty well zeroed and functioned reliably and then like that guy's pistol was the one that everyone would practice on. So not the most convenient thing. I don't know that these got all that much use, but mechanically it's a really cool conversion. Um, and I should point out this of course is set up on a Swiss Luger uh, in 7.65 millimeter and this is the commercial version of the kit. Also manufactured by Irma, but then marketed by a Swiss gunsmith by the name of Glazer or Glaser. Uh, in Zurich. So a, a number of these were sold on the commercial market for Swiss target shooters who are a fantastic target market for a 22 caliber Luger conversion in the 1930s. Anyway, let me show you how this works and how it assembles in and out of the pistol. It's one of the, the cleaner and more impressive 22 kits that I've seen. One of the first things you notice about this is, of course, that the barrel has been lengthened. And there's good reason for that. Um, this isn't to accommodate long barreled pistols. This is because uh, in order to function properly, this kit needed to get as much energy as it could out of uh, the long rifle cartridges. In fact, for the Swiss commercial version, they actually specified Patronin number 7, which was called a 22 extra long. Uh, this really needed full power ammunition to work, and having, about, you know, having a little bit more, having another 2 inches of barrel, gave them just a little bit more energy to work with. So mechanically, what this does is convert the Luger from a short recoil toggle locked action to just a simple blowback. It looks the same. It still has a knee joint here. However, this isn't actually really a locked knee joint. Um, as soon as you start pushing back on the bolt face here, you can see that that joint bends up and the whole thing can move backwards. On, on a standard proper Luger, a locked breech Luger, um, the knee joint is locked until the slide goes back like so, and the toggle knobs actually hit this angled surface. That kicks the knob up, which breaks the joint and allows it to cycle. On the 22 kit, because of course 22 is far less powerful than 7.65 parabellum or 9mm parabellum, this is just simple blowback. This is actually our firing pin, so it doubles as a, uh, a cocked indicator, 
When it's out, it's cocked, and when you fire, that drops in. The kit comes with its own magazine, which is, of course, a 22 caliber magazine. The standard size was five, but they also made seven, eight, and ten round magazines. I am not sure what this one is because it doesn't have any markings on it, and I don't have any 22 cartridges handy to test it out with. However, it's definitely more than five. I would suspect this is probably eight, if I had to guess. Um, it's a very well-built magazine. It is serialized, as are all the other major parts of the conversion. Because it's 22 is a lot narrower than 9 or 765, they were able to make this very thick walled, and so that's a very robust magazine. As you would want for a target gun, you have sights that are adjustable both for windage and elevation there, which is pretty cool. It has a little teeny V-notch sight in the back, um, and so that rear sight is part of the conversion kit. The front sight is just the standard pistol front sight. As far as markings go, because this is the commercial version, it's marked with the gunsmith's name, so W. Glazer, Glazer, Glazer of Zurich, and then there are serial numbers on the main parts of the conversion. If we take a look at the, the box that this came in, you've got a really nicely preserved label there on front, which describes what it is. Oh, and in fact, it is an eight-shot conversion kit, so very cool. Inside, we have a whole descriptive instruction set. I think that's an instruction set. I doubt he is still in business at this address, but you're welcome to go look and see if you're in Switzerland. And then this kit actually comes with a bunch of additional parts. So it actually has two complete breech assemblies, plus, plus some springs, some little small parts, and some barrel fittings. Now the actual relevant parts of the kit that you need to assemble this are here, magazine, barrel, this is the spacer that goes at the front of the barrel and the nut that holds it on. I think there are actually supposed to be two of these nuts so that they, you can lock them together, but this kit only has one. Here is the breech assembly, so you pretty much already saw what it does. There are two springs in here because this one is the firing pin spring and this one is actually the main spring. So to install this, you're first going to disassemble your Luger and then set aside the magazine and the bolt assembly because you won't be using those in 22. Next, take your barrel extension and take the barrel and we want this notch for the extractor uh, facing upward. So we're going to slide this into the barrel. Note that at the end here, it is shaped just like a 765 Parabellum cartridge, so it will fit right into the chamber of the pistol. Slide it down, you have to snap it over the ejector there. There we go. And then that sits right up against the chamber. Now we can put this sleeve over the end and then this nut on. And what that will do is tighten down the barrel so that it can't move around. Like I said, I think there's supposed to be a second nut on there just to lock everything in place. Now you're going to install the 22 bolt assembly. This is going to slide in right there on the rails. This can be a little bit finicky to put in. Get it over the trigger there. Go. That. There we go. Now it's dropped in and you can see it has lined up with the main pin hole there. So we're going to take our pivot pin, put that in. There we go. Pivot pin goes in. Now we can slide this back onto the frame. Note that there is no mainspring hook here because we're not actually using the original pistol mainspring, we're just using that spring in the conversion kit. So that slides on, pull it back just like you would reassembling the original parts, put on the side plate, lock it in place, and now you're ready to use it. Got your magazine of course, and there it is cocked. I'll just drop that gently there, and presto. So just to be clear, uh, Rock Island is selling the conversion kit with the box and all of the extra conversion kit parts, but not the pistol. Um, the pistol is a separate lot. In fact, by the time you see this, uh, the pistol will have already sold at a separate auction. So I wanted to have it in there so you could see exactly how the kit assembled and worked, because it doesn't look like a whole lot when it's just off a pistol by itself. However, these kits aren't exactly floating around everywhere, and if you would like to have the kit, 
to assemble onto your own Luger. Uh, you can check that out on Rock Island's catalog page, see their pictures, their description, uh, their price estimate, all that sort of stuff, uh, both for this conversion kit and for everything else that they have in the sale. Thanks for watching.